rape has been an ongoing issue in India, especially with the way that authorities handle rape. Um, however, people were thinking that things were getting a little better, and now we have a case where it shows that things still need a lot of improvement. There was a 14-year-old uh, alleged rape victim in India that went to the authorities to file a complaint, and she was allegedly told to strip naked and prove to a police officer that she was raped. Um, after that happened, she did complain to the police officer, and fortunately, uh, he is being questioned, and the man who allegedly raped her is being investigated. But, I mean, that's a perfect case of adding insult to injury. Oh, a yeah. rape victim comes in, and I, I don't know if it's because they want to further victimize these victims, or if it's because they just haven't been trained properly on how to deal with these types of situations. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. but I mean, I, I don't want it. I, I just can't give them that benefit of the doubt. I mean, I think it's common sense that you don't tell a rape victim to strip down after she went through something so traumatic. Well, I don't think it's actually something where they have not. Yeah, I think partly it's it's they haven't been trained. You know that there's a lot of training that goes into this because remember in the United States, you know, 20 years ago, women were still uh, grilled on the stand. You know, were they asking for it? Did they dress provocatively? You know that there was in some ways uh, quite a bit of blaming the victim here in the United States. Just you know, just recently. So it's obviously a long-term cultural shift that has to happen as well to make this change. The training has to improve for the police officers, but I think it's also part of, you know, it's part of the culture, the culture that says that, you know, a rape victim, a woman is, is a second class citizen in India, you know, no matter what the actual laws say, in effect, in reality, they're second class citizens. And in this particular case, when you have uh, women and girls, their value is primarily predicated on whether they're a virgin at the time that they're you know, married, that that's their most important thing of value about them, then I think that it perpetuates this kind of culture where you, know, you have to prove that you have not been raped because that's the thing that ma matters most to everybody is your virginity. It's so important to have like a sexual revolution in so many different countries. And what I mean by that, and I'm not trying to belittle the, uh, you know, the, the horror of this story, but when you have that kind of revolution, when you have women stand up and say, no, my value is not based on my virginity or my hymen, that's stupid and I'm not gonna follow those rules, that's when society starts to change, that's when culture starts to shift. And of course, it's very, very difficult to do that when you have countries that do honor killings and, and, and you know, just brutalize and terrorize these women. But at the same time, the, another really good way to battle that and combat that is to spread education to those regions of the world so people understand that, hey, your way of thinking is holding your entire country back. Now, I always thought India was full of nice people. It is, it is full, full of, of nice, nice people. people. It's, it's a cultural, I mean. So wh what's with all the raping and all the, uh, uh, you know, turning the blind eye to the raping? It doesn't sound like what nice people do. You know what I mean? Like every person from India I ever met in the United States, they're always the nicest people in the world. You know, they're oh, no. so nice. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to go there. I can do, I can do well, access. Well, I mean, you can say, can obviously, that there are going to be terrible people within any group of, of but it collection seems, of human beings. It seems beings. a bigger it's problem in their society, right? What they just get, why is it now they're just figuring out that rape is bad. And just to put things into context though, Jimmy, it's not like, the, yes, the United States is better, but think about what the political uh, climate was like uh, during the last election, where you have politicians trying to redefine what rape is. Oh, when boy. you have politicians no, trying to no do kidding. pass legislation for transvaginal ultrasounds if women want to get abortions. I mean, you have the same type of assault on women here in the United States. It's just not as brutal sounding as what you see with this particular case or the rape that happened on a bus in Delhi. Uh, but, but you have to make sure that you fight back against this type of mindset because because if you allow it to happen, it's, ju it's just going to get worse. Well, it can also be a generational thing yeah. as well. You know, when, uh, here in the United States, again, you know that over time, as the older generations have died off and their prejudices have died off with them, thankfully, you know, we have uh, experienced major cultural shifts in major areas. You know, and when you look at Southeast Asia, um, I, there was this amazing study you guys, pro uh, you know, about how one in four men, I think, or the, the high prevalence of rape of men. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the yes. actual statistics, what? but a high prevalence of men in in Asian countries report having been raped. And you Whoa. know, when you talk about stigma, that's a huge stigma right there. Mm -hmm. And it, to me, I think there's a lot of, uh, it, it, it's based in the, the culture's attitudes towards sex. So as that culture begins to shift, as um, you know, 
the ideas of civil rights and the rights of individuals to be secure in their persons as that continues to, to be spread throughout this, this, this ideal that you have a right not to be raped, that that is spreading out throughout the world, that we'll see this shift, but it is certainly not happening fast enough for, for the people in those countries, mm -hmm. especially the women. Well, one in four? I, I, I could be getting that number wrong. Yeah. It's, I think, one in four women report being, uh, you know, no, I'm, I'm mangling four, the numbers, I, but, okay. you know. Yeah, it, a high uh, percentage of men admitted to having sex with their wives against their will. Oh, that's right. One in four men admitted that they had raped somebody and in that same study, there was a high prevalence of men who reported having been raped. So there's are two st really? different statistics. Yes. Sorry, man, I mixed those up there. How, how do you have sex with, I don't know how a man has sex with a woman when he's not feeling like it. I just don't get it because you have to have an erection and that means that you're kind of, you're thinking about it in the right way anyway. Like you're kind of, I, you know, I've, lo I've gotten disinterested in sex in the middle of having it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I don't understand if don't you really... Don't name any names. That's, if you really <laughs> that's don't, not nice. If you, I'm sorry, Tina. The point <laughs> is... Hey, she, you know, come on, garlic. Anyway, the point is she... she uh, I don't understand how a guy can be raped by a woman. Well, I guess it maybe could not happen. raped by a yeah. woman. In this case, it could be men being raped by men. Exactly. Oh, okay. so, well, those you know, Asians are hairless, so those guys, they're, you know... <laughs> That's going to happen more often. Male rape is a real problem and a real is. issue. Yes. And of we course, we're making fun of it. Yeah. So, yeah.